Hello everybody. Welcome to this presentation about Kubernetes Advanced Networking Testing with Kine. My name is Antonio Gea and I'm a contributor in Kubernetes and Kine projects. For those of you that are not familiar with Kine, Kine is a tool that is able to deploy Kubernetes in Docker containers. It was created by Benjamin Elder some time ago to improve the testing of the Kubernetes project. One of the most important features of Kine is that it allows you to create multi-node scenarios very useful to test conformance and it's very optimized for performance and stability. It's able to boost to boot a cluster in less than 30 seconds. The way that Kine works is using a special node images. These node images are container images that come preloaded with uh, systemd, kubelet, and containerd binaries and the rest of the Kubernetes component container images. The way that Kine works is using these images to create a cluster and once the images are created and running, it runs kubeadmin on top to configure the cluster. So in the slide, you can see what is the most common deployment of kind for testing with one control plane node and two worker nodes. For this presentation, we are going to focus in the networking. So what we are interested in is how kind implements the networking. Kind in by default uses Docker and the Docker networking creates a Linux bridge. Then, then all the container images are attached to this Linux bridge using BS interfaces. On top of that, we have a lot of IP table rules in different layers. So for example, Docker uses IP tables to implement forwarding from the host to the containers. And Kine or the Kubernetes cluster uses IP tables by QProxy to create the services abstraction for networking and Kinet uses it to create to work the pod to pod communication. Another important feature from Kine is that it has an API and we can use this API to create plugins. So we don't need to wait for the project to implement the feature that we want. We just can use this API. And this is what we are going to demonstrate in this presentation, how to use Kine API to create complex network scenarios. One of the most common requests in Kine that we didn't implemented officially is to be able to simulate nodes with multiple interfaces and multiple networks. This usually this is common in bare metal scenarios when you want to provide different networks for different functionalities. In this case, in the example, we have a stor storage network and an external network. So let's explain how we can create a plugin to extend Kine without having to have the feature in the Kine project itself. So what we are going to do is to deploy a kind cluster. The kind cluster, as we saw before, is going to create several nodes attached to a attached to a to a Linux bridge. If we want to create new networks, we can we can use Docker directly to create a new network. The command Docker network create is going to create a new Linux bridge. As we can see in the image, this new Linux bridge is going to be isolated. The next step is to connect the containers, the node cluster containers to this Linux bridge. So again, Docker has another command that allows us to do that and automatically creates the interfaces inside the nodes. This is very useful, for example, to test scenarios and to 
use the Docker capabilities because we can, with one just simple command, we can run an external container simulating an NFS server that bots can, can use to test the multi, the multi network functionality. So we are going to demonstrate how to do this. If you see my screen, you can see that I have a repository with different plugins. In this case, I created a plugin that is called Vermeta. This plugin uses the a config file to define the topology. If you can see, you can you can leverage the kind API to keep having all the kind functionalities and extend it to have a new field that allows you to define the external networks. So we can just tell the command to create a new cluster with this configuration where we tell that we want to add two new external networks to the cluster. Config Once we have the cluster deployed, we can see that we can still use the kind commands with our new cluster. And we can see that we are going to have the new networks that we define. So here we have external and storage. And we can see that this new networks are attached to the commands that to the containers can control print and can work it. So let's now try to simulate a, an external NFS server that is going to share with a container one of the host folders. Let's create one folder that we want to share it already exists okay let me clean it so you can see that we start from a clean environment and now we are going to create a container with an NFS server in the storage network. So this is the command that says docker run a container with the name NFS in the network storage and these are the the options to mount the new recently created folder into the container so we can ex export it. Okay now we can see that we have a new container called NFS. Here you go. And it is running. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a pod that is able to mount this volume. And we are going to see how the cluster is able to use both networks. One of the good things of Kind is that it uses the Docker custom network that allow to resolve the container name. So for the server, we don't have to use APs. We just can use the name of the container here directly. So this pod is going to mount this new folder and it's going to create a file called dates with the time in a loop. So let's apply the manifest. And once it is running, it is being created. When it is running, we should be able to see the file in the host. TMP NFS share dates. A 
ok it took some time to, to create it but you can see how the file is being updated by the pod every five seconds one of the more complex scenarios to test are the multi-cluster by multi-cluster i mean different kubernetes clusters in different regions or in different data centers the problematic here is that the network between this cluster is not always really well and sometimes it goes through internet and you have latency and you have packet drops and all these things so for testing these scenarios we need to emulate this connection between cluster this intra cluster connectivity that is not always easy to do so how can we do this in kind well first what we are going to do is to create one cluster in its in its own network so its cluster is going to be as isolated in its own network what we are going to do this because we want to emulate the inter cluster com communication and for that we are going to connect all these clusters to a container to a special container that contains the that is able to emulate the the one but uh, we have a problem with docker that docker doesn't allow to change the gateway of the docker network so what we are going to do is a small uh, we can work around this with netlink so at the end these uh, docker containers are network name space network name spaces with bf interfaces so what we are going to do is to use netlink to replace the gateways this way we achieve that each cluster send the traffic to this one emulator container okay so let me show you how to do this so in this case we are going we have a new plugin called multicluster and i created a configuration file this is up to you you can define you can create the configurations that you want for this what i use it is a template that allows you to to indicate the cluster name and the number of nodes that you want per cluster and the network characteristics because in multi-cluster we need different subnets per cluster they cannot overlap if they overlap we cannot route and the traffic from cluster to cluster is not going to work once we have the configuration file we just need to run this plugin needs sudo privilege because uh, the maintenance replaced gateway workaround so we tell sudo multicaster create config and it starts to create the clusters okay once it once it finished we can see that we are going to have two clusters and each cluster is going to have its own network okay so we can create an hyper server 
in one of the clusters. So we are going to test the connectivity between two applications in different clusters. So in this case, we are going to use this image that has an IP server. Okay, we created one IP server in US and we're going to create another IP server in Europe. So let's see. Oh, sorry. So we can see that the pod is running. Okay. Okay. Once we have the pod running, we are going to expose the pod. Oh, sorry. The pod in US, so the pod from Europe can reach it. Post pod hyper. We need to specify the part, the port. Hyper listening the port 5001 by default. So we expose the port and we are going to remember the IP address because right now what we are going to do let me try to split the terminal we are going to connect to the pod in Europe Okay, and we are going to test the TCP connectivity. So we can report every second and connect to the cluster that is 10 and this is 128.254. And we can see, okay, that we are in a an ideal situation. We have uh, 30 gigabits per second between Europe and US. Okay, we can check the IP of one of the nodes in US. I have a query that is able to give us the IPs of the nodes. So we can check the latency pinging one of these IPs and we can see that we have close to 100, 0.100 milliseconds between the cluster but all of us know that that's not real so let's and this is the thing we can we can see that we have this special container that we talked before, that is the one container, and this is the one that we are going to use the more, the, to emulate the one. So the clusters behave as if they were deploying in, in a real scenario. So we are going to get into this container. And we are going to emulate a latency of 100 milliseconds. To emulate the latency, what we are going to use is the traffic control from the Linux. This is, and we know that each cluster is connected to the ETH1 and ETH2 interfaces. If you have more clusters, you just need to map them the commands to the corresponding interfaces and we are going to tell to add a 100 milliseconds today okay we can see that the pin starts to go 100 milliseconds this is in one direction let's do it for the other direction so we see that we have 200 milliseconds and what do i want to demonstrate with this okay so we have more latency okay 
we can live with that, but let's see what happens to the iPad. Okay, you see, now we have 43 megabits per second. That is why it's important to emulate real scenarios. If you are testing a multi-cluster and you are not emulating the latency, you are in a very happy scenario because when somebody deploys your application, whatever, in a multi-cluster scenario and with long distances like Europe to Asia or to US, they are going to have latency and the latency impact directly on the bandwidth of the TCP connections. For our last example, we are going to simulate a multi-zone scenario and demonstrate a new feature that is going to be released in this new Kubernetes 1.21 version that is called Topology Aware Hints. So basically, users start to deploy more multi-zone scenarios to improve the resilience of their clusters, but current implementation of service doesn't provide a good way to indicate the traffic to remain on zone. So it usually is a spread all over the cluster. However, the users may want to give some affinity to improve performance and reduce costs. For that, this new feature gives a new field in the endpoint analysis to provide this information so QProxy or other services implementation can use it to, to implement the service affinity to the zone. We can demonstrate this new and test this new feature with Kai. An example on how to do this is I created a plugin that deploy a, a multi-song cluster. So you just need to give the parameters with the topology that you want. It means the zones, the number of zones, we are going to set two zones and the number of nodes per zone. Let's add one node per zone. In this case, the control plane node is not considered as part of the zone. Once we have our cluster working, we are going to create a, ser a deployment with three replicas, one pod per node. So for that, I have a template here that you can use. So we are going to deploy three replicas and this, this program is a, a server that replies with the name of the pod. So we are, we are going to create a deployment. And we are going to expose the deployment to create a service. So we have a new service. And this new service has to have endpoint slices per each pod. The way that this feature works is adding a new field to the endpoint slices with the topology information. So I have a query here that will allow us to extract this information. So this basically is iterating over the endpoint slice and for each endpoint it prints the name of the pod of the endpoint and the new field called hints. Right now, uh, it's missing the name of the endpoint slice. Server deployment. So we can see that these are the name of the pods, but there is no value in the hints field. This is because the service has to be annotated with a an special annotation to enable the topology hints. So we are going to annotate the service. This is the annotation, service.kubernetes 
Topology topology aware hints equal auto. So once we annotate the service, we should be able to see the topology hints. Okay, so we have this endpoint that are preferred to have traffic from zone zero and the other this other one that is preferred to have traffic from zone one. So how can we test it? So the most simple way to test this is to send traffic to the pods from one specific zone. In this case, I have this query that is going to give us the name of the nodes and the zone it belongs. So that's using the well-known label for the nodes topology.kubernetes.io zone. Okay, and we can see that the kind worker two is in zone one. So if we query the if we query the service from this node, the feature should give us affinity to the pod in the song one only. So for doing that, we can exec directly from the, in this case, worker two. It's missing an R, kind worker two, and we cure this special this is the IP of the service that has a handler host name that returns the host name of the pod. We do that. Oh I did something wrong, okay exec. If we do that, we can see that the, everything goes to the same endpoint, that if we check again, is the endpoint preferred for song one. If we do the same, but for the other node, the kind worker that is in song zero, we should see the other two endpoints. Okay, so NS6 and NBKHM that we see here that are the ones preferred for zone zero. Well, I think that with these three examples, we were able to demonstrate how to use kind to emulate and test complex E2 scenarios. My recommendation is to try to keep it always these scenarios as close as possible to the reality as we saw in the multi multi cluster example adding latency to the to the test make a big difference. Another important point is that kind is not a replacement for system testing. There are things that you are not going to be able to emulate in containers. With this if you are interested in helping or contributing or you have some idea or you want to create your own plugins or collaborate with me or with the kind community in these plugins, you have the links to the Slack channels. And if you're interested in the in this presentation code, you have the link to my own repo so you can go through the examples on your own. Thank you very much for attending this presentation and goodbye.